Hey, this your boy Laws from the other side of sports with BOK Sports 980. Just reminding you to go download our app. All you got to do is go to your app store and type in parentheses, the other side of sports. You get to listen to our content whenever you want. He's lying. He lying. Dog, I'm not lying. On Mother's Mode, you can get our app at the app store on your mobile device right now. Yeah. So when you're on your commute or whenever, you can rock with us. Now on our show. You are now tuned to the other side of BOK Sports 9 Welcome back. You're now tuned into the other side. Yeah. I'm your host, Laws. We got Aaron. We got Jeff. Yeah. yeah. No D. He on a recon mission right now. On out here saving the world, no. doing something. Uh, got a lot of stuff on tap today. We ain't gonna waste a whole lot of time. For starters, uh, for those of y'all who watched Stars, that's right. You already know. And then the power came back. Not the power out the outlet, but the but the power, the show power. And uh. Yo, can I just tell you how disappointing it is, young, to watch? Did y'all did y'all see the, the the latest episode of this, young? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, I saw it. Yo, I, 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 so this is the thing. Because I don't like the jump. You you watch it, uh, Jim? Did you watch the show? <clears throat> well, I used to, but basically the, the short of it is uh, for season three last year, like my my pops just randomly canceled the stars. What? So. Like he was like he don't be watching really that stuff no more. So Yo, let me just say you this. <laughs> he did you a favor, dog. He did you a favor. This joint is some trash, dog. Trash. He's lying. He lying. Oh my god. The thing is, and, and people are like, why are you saying it's trash? Why are you being so hard? It's because the joint is so predictable. Like, like the writers of this show, they basically like just throwing a bunch of softballs like you can see all the way to the end like what's going to happen so because i'm totally against the jump and i'm just going to spoil the whole jump so if you don't want to hit it then too bad because the jones is trash if they write better then i would want to keep it trash, a secret but they want to put everything out in the first episode so you can see all the way to the end it's ridiculous though it's ridiculous so first things first i'm just going to drop all the all the loopholes in the storyline. Perfect. So Batman's no. Don't waste your time, young. I'm not buying stars, young. I'm not. No. So first things first. For those who did see the first episode, one thing is just so fake. So Angela, who who's the main character in the jump, she gets it. Uh, gets ghost hemmed up on a murder case or whatever. The Batman goes to jail. First of all. She's too heavily involved in a, in this whole situation to be involved the way she is. If this was real life, young, she's going to jail. She's not walking around. She's not still working on the DEA and all this stuff. She's in jail with ghosts, first right, of all. you already know. Second, the way they staged the story up, they set the story up, it just don't make, like, the bat, the main dude who actually killed the, the uh, DEA agent in the last, last season, this Batman's about to throw the gun into the river or whatever, and dispose of the evidence, he gets a phone call on the pier dock, and then the Batman just wraps the gun back up and just takes it back with him. Like, he doesn't get rid of the evidence. So clearly, that's foreshadowing that the Batman gonna get hemmed up eventually somewhere along the story, yeah. and it's gonna be because they're gonna find the gun. I'm guessing that Angela's gonna find the gun or find the evidence and then realize that she was a dummy hemming up ghost the whole time and then be trying to like make everything right and you know how you know how that story goes the jump was just too predictable then it's just little stuff that just makes me mad like the Bama gonna be like the uh i don't know what what can't the uh what's the little the lackey Bama's name the little light-skinned Bama. what's his name Aaron? you know what i'm talking about remy that, that's, that's like Pam. yeah remy. yeah yeah, that Batman. He playing both sides of the whole thing. He gonna go up to uh to Kanan and be like, young, leave the little boy alone. Like, don't contact the little boy. Like, leave him alone. Like, he has a heart all of a sudden. The Batman, as soon as he leaves, the Batman Kanan get on a text message and start text messaging 
then uh, goes to son who's like 16, but he act like he eight. Cause the Batman just, you know, when we gonna hang out, like talking to, it just don't make no sense. The, the storyline just so incoherent. It just, I, I don't know why people wanna watch this foolishness. It don't make, it's not even like close to being realistic. Like, come on, man. Like, yeah. so many holes in the storyline It's ridiculous. I, I just can't, I can't do it. I went, I watched it, and people were like, why are you watching then? Because I wanted to see if they were going to continue in the same trajectory of the foolishness, or if they want, like, you know, bring in better writers, do, you know, clean up some of the loose ends on the storyline and stuff. Nah, dog, they they don't care. But they are who we thought they were. And, and we to me, it's home. insulting, because they just like, well, Babbage just want to be entertained. They don't care about the storyline or the, or the gaps or whatever, whatever, so... It's trash. That Jones going in the circle of file. But on a, on another note, what is that? What is that other show, Young? That I was just be talking about. That's that's good. Jones Orange OC. Is the new black. No, not Orange is New Black. Ain't nobody watching that jump, man. What's the other jump? The uh, the wrestling jump. What is uh? It's more people watching Orange is a New Black than Glow. <laughs> no, the Glow Joe, the Glow Joe, funny dog. It's that hilarious. Jones is OC. It's hilarious, yo. That joke is hilarious. About some women wrestlers, though. Jones so super OC. Cannot win with them. Um, but that's it for the TV. Anything else, young? You watching any good shows, Jeff? I know you got the stars turned off on you, but is you anything else out there? Nah, not really. Um, just uh, like reruns on stuff. I what crime TV? I'm, I'm at that. Like ID, I watch. I've been watching ID a lot when I watch regular and when I'm not watching sports. So that's that's kind of what you know. what I'm saying I, I fell behind on like Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. That joint always entertain me. Can't can't do it, dog. Can't do <laughs> that's it. That's right. You already know. Can't do it. Yeah. But, did you did you watch Did you watch the BET Awards? Nah, dog. Uh, I Anybody watch that joint? Yeah, I saw parts. Yeah, I didn't see the entire entire thing. Um, you saw you saw but, Joe Buttons uh, drop the mic on uh, on the Migos though. Yeah, yeah, I seen that. It. I seen that. No, me, who, who, who dresses the Migos, dog? There's no like, way you can convince me that you're a hardcore but, thug dressed like that, dog. That's but that you know that'd be the look they be going for, looking like some straight mariachi parmesan. Like that's the name. <laughs> like, like, but that's the look, though. The Migos, dog. Like that's the. But I feel you too, though. I mean, they be way od with the jump, but yeah, that's that's the look that they be going for. Can't and, do it. Yeah, I guess, man. I guess. <laughs> I, I ain't got no answers for it, dog. But uh. Uh, back to our relationship 101 uh, keep getting emails like I said if you want to email us your questions or whatever topics to talk about just email us at boksports980 at gmail.com all one word boksports980 at gmail.com and we'll, we'll, we'll do our best so this email comes in and says uh, I've been in a long term long, long time relationship uh, with my significant other and it's starting to get stale. Do you have any advice yeah. on how to keep the fire alive? Get a so, side piece. no. <laughs> what you say? Get a side piece. <laughs> that's right. You already know. Oh, that's the answer they <laughs> wanted to hear. Like, yo, no, that, yeah, that's, that's a fail. Man. Yeah. So, I, I mean, the thing is, I probably would have some questions, like, yeah. you know, because. People have different definitions of what stale is and like, you know, the Bama could have been, a, you know, a square from the jump and you just overlooked all that or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of variables that go into the scenario of stale, you know. Mind you, mind, mind you Harold, this is what you, you're projecting because... Uh, you know, obviously you, you're you're newly married still in the eyes. So, <laughs> you know I mean? I'm I'm, t- I'm saying that because when I speak, it'll be even behind you because I'm about to get married, and we know Aaron is a playboy out here. Yeah. So, you know, what I, mean? like, <laughs> I just want to. So I just want to. It, it, that, that's that's true. That's true. But but the thing is, is like even when I was in a relationship, like you you reach those points where you know what I'm saying it's like okay, you know. That that like initial butterfly stage where you want to talk to four in the morning and all that stuff kind of like goes away and then it's like okay Bro, what are you talking about you know man? then what now what you know what I'm saying and I think what happens a lot of time in relationships is that people's flames they burn out too quick like they 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 want they 
they want this like ignited, like the jump ignites and it's like, oh, it's, it's, it's so much all at one time. And instead of like doing a slow burn, like, you know what I'm saying? Let the jump just, just ride and chill, dog. It's, uh, there's no other way to like kind of describe, but it's a slow burn. It's like, you ain't trying to just get everywhere all at once. You just taking your time and you really like enjoying the stages of a relationship. You know what I'm saying? And it, and you know, it. after a while, you know, for, for me, if you, if you, some people chase after that, like that, like initial high or that initial, like, you know, excitement that you get. And, you know, when that like dies off and in, in the natural sense, then people start like looking for it in other places or they just, you know, throw in a towel. And basically you could possibly forfeit something great by like just giving up too early because it doesn't have that initial like fire that it had when y'all y'all first got together because you know as I've if I as I've come to know my relationship you know as time goes on you discover new things about about the person and you know what I'm saying you discover new things that you like you know my wife is always changing stuff all the time like she's the type of person like we go to a restaurant once she order one thing we go back to the same spot she order a different thing we go back to the same spot she will order something different like she's always like you know, open and just trying new things and stuff like that. And that's been a, that's been a challenge for me because I'm like the type of bad with chicken fingers and French fries every time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so you know, being in that environment where you know you're being challenged like that, you discover new things. You know what I'm saying? If if you're willing but to, but give them, but give 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 them like that, and all that's great. But give them advice on potential things to do to make it not be stale with that that a lot of that's you saying you know like kind of sticking it out even like at times when you know it's ups and downs but what is some advice on things they could do to make sure that things aren't going stale or to you know i guess spruce things up so to speak so i would say if i was giving advice what what to do is i would say don't don't put the burden of something being stale on your partner. So a lot of times when people say like, oh, yeah, things are getting stale. They're looking at their partner and saying like they're they're boring or they're not doing this. Like, why don't take control of what you have control over? Like, you know, what I'm saying maybe maybe plan an event or plan something to do that is different than what, you know, you, you generally do. Like, you know what I'm saying? You might do the Netflix and chill oh type thing. Gosh, Instead man. of doing that, you know, go to a concert, go to a comedy show, or, you know, go on a trip. Or, you know what I'm saying? Just do something different. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things, like, that you can do out here. Like, it's a lot of different things you can do um, to, like, go on a hike, go for a walk, go to the swimming pool, you know what I'm saying? Go play a sport y'all haven't played. Take her out golfing. You know what I'm saying? Go, you know, go to the theater. You know what I'm saying? Try something that's maybe outside of your comfort zone. Go to one of them yeah. little them little paint night, date night jumps where, you, you know, you paint and you eat. You know, go to one of those cooking classes. I mean, it's just so much stuff. This is stuff that, you know, my wife and I, we did while dating. You know what I'm saying? We still do stuff. What would you say, Jeff? Uh... I mean, I think a lot of all of that was uh, was definitely good. Um, just just in general, like you said, trying new things. Um, <clears throat> because typically, obviously, when something's new, it's it's an adventure because you you don't know, so you're potentially nervous. But then after you go through with it, you could Perfect. have a totally different feeling. And so, like trying new things, I think is always a good thing. But I mean, even like you mentioned before that, like. I think that's why, like, selecting, you know, who you choose to, you know, be in a relationship with is key. Because I remember, um, I think Aaron speaking on on the past uh, couple shows, I I can't remember which episode it was on, but just saying, you know, when you go on dates with, you know, girls or you're talking to a girl, like, you're evaluating them to see which level that they're even going to be at. Like, whether it is even a date or whether, you know, you just, like, you know, uh, hitting and keeping it moving like all these evaluations are taking place I mean on both sides so you know if you're choosing to be with someone then you have to 
you know, know all those, uh, the good and the bad and see the potential and have all that stuff there because things won't really be stale to you. Like, because you, you, you know that that's the person you want to be with and that you, y'all riding and dying for each other and, and you really taking, you know, those vows serious. So like picking ahead of time is definitely key. But in terms of in the, once you're with the person, I, I think like all those things you said, like trying new things, um, could be a great way to, you know, put some life, I guess, back into the relationship. Uh-huh. You the last voice, man. Is this a joke? What I look like trying to give somebody a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> He's an hey. idiot. Don't listen to this. He's an idiot. All right, that's what we got to say about that. <laughs> no, the ladies want to hear. They want to hear. Like, they want to hear what you yeah, got to say. Hear from, but look, though, from a, from a single pers- guy's perspective, like maybe tell them like you know why it is that you know or, or what you think would attract you in or, or things that they could do I guess in a relationship if you were in a relationship some of the things you would look for to like keep you keep you yeah, interested when, when, when you interested when in you checking like out when you checking out on the yeah. day, huh? when you going to check out oh this is not a fair question I'm like throwing Hail Marys at this point because it's like <laughs> <laughs> I can't even blame a lot of you know what I mean situations that I'm kind of X'd out like on the particular person I just wasn't in a place necessarily where I wanted to be you know what I mean dealing with somebody like that a lot of times the only thing I can add basically to kind of reiterate what Jeff was saying is that um like a lot of times people are so used to a routine of doing things where it's like okay I meet somebody the conversation is fine. We have some stuff in common. We have sex, so okay, now we go together. And it's like people, it's just like the process is kind of flawed. Where it's like you have mm-hmm. the onus is on you to be able to, when you're evaluating somebody, be like, okay, there are these things, characteristics, or traits where you can kind of nip that in the bud early instead of just going through a, a drawn out process where stuff you could have anticipated early on ends up happening and then you're at a point where you're like okay things are stale and it's like okay if y'all giving Mm -hmm. advice on a marriage where people are trying to like relight that fire that's one thing but if you're like just dating somebody and you have that and you make a blanket statement like things are stale you're probably past the point where things are going to be almost recoverable like if there are no Mm -hmm. children or anything to keep you all together once somebody makes those kind of blanket statements a lot of times no matter what that person does to change or try to light a spark the first time, I guess, let's say a weekend comes up where y'all just sitting around the house and you fly, oh, here we go. We, You know what I mean? It's just like, sometimes with, it just, I don't know. Yeah, nah, it can, I, I hear you, dog, and I agree. It could be a rap sure. city in the basement early if, you, if you're not cognizant of those different things. I mean, also too, you know, it's not, it's not one person's responsibility to like, like bring, make you happy or like, you know what I'm saying? Like in a, in a situation, a lot of women think like, oh, it's like, oh, he has to make me happy or their objective is to make the guy happy. And it's like, no, people need to be happy within themselves because happiness is not a like sustained state. It don't, it's not like just all the time. You're going to be happy. You know, sometimes you're going to be happy. Sometimes you're going to be regular. Sometimes you're going to be sad. Like it's, it's variations of your emotions and a person has to be in control of their own self and their own emotions. You know what I'm saying? It, it's good when you have two people who are like both healthy, both happy themselves and looking to like, just really be themselves in a relationship. Like, I don't feel like my wife and I, like our relationship gets stale because I'm never like not being who I am. You know what I'm saying? She's never not being who she is. And we just thrive together. You know what I'm saying? And her, her, like things about her, you know, mesh well with things about me and it helped challenge me. And it keeps like, you know, the joint exciting, like, you know. Yeah, and I don't know what you were saying. It's like a lot of people, like even if you gave them all the money in the world and the options to do whatever they want, they would still be bored like on their own. Like they don't know how to keep themselves entertained. They don't know what excites them like solo. So they might go into a relationship, like you were saying, looking for somebody else to be able to provide that spark or, you know what I mean, to keep them excited. But some people don't even know what they like themselves. They just lost. And they might be at a stale place in life. They've been at the job too long or whatever, and it might manifest itself Mm -hmm. in the relationship they're in. So like you were saying, again, like if somebody feels like they're at a stale place, quote unquote, in the relationship, probably 85% of that is on them. You're a (laughs) bum! 
Let's go champ. <laughs> Dang, I ain't wanna go at you like that, Slim, but it's facts. So I mean <laughs> decide to call it a day. <laughs> I mean, I, I, obviously, I, I, no one is necessarily advocating for that. But I mean, there have been a many of the relationships that were prolonged due to a side situation. That's a fact. He's lying. He's lying. He lying. Oh my god! I just have to throw that out there for in interest of all parties listening. <laughs> Not if it's kids, though. If it's kids or a no, wedding no, no, ring, no. then we're not condoning that. <laughs> <laughs> but the only real commitment no. is marriage anyway. So I don't even know what a boyfriend is or a girlfriend is. If you're not married. <laughs> yeah. Thanks on that. Yeah. Oh, dog. Yeah. All right. Before we get stoned on this, Joe. Uh, <laughs> the NBA Awards happened last night. And I like this. You know what I'm saying? They, they 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 made it up. They did it up real nice. And they had Drake as the MC of the event. And yeah, young. So I have a lot of thoughts about this because some of the jokes that Drake had as the as the host, it, it was a little risky, dog. And to me, I always feel like it's somebody behind the scenes puppeteering things. Like I just I can't help but to look beyond like the things with face value and the fact that it was an NBA event, the fact that they had, they picked Drake, you know what I'm saying? So, so those are two intentional things. And then the jokes that were being made. Okay. The first joke that Bama made, he was like, Oh, last night was the BET awards. And tonight is the NBA awards. Like I haven't seen black people work this hard in, in 200 what? years. So like basically like a, Bro, what are you talking about, man? Uh, like a slavery joke, basically like a slave, a slavery joke, right? And that, and to me, it bothered me. Um, I mean, he had some other jokes too. I, one of his jokes was like, "Draymond Green stopped kicking people in the groin, moved on to something much worse, his own podcast." So it was like, ha 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 ha, you know, a little chuckle joke. Um, he was like, "New York is the city that never sleeps, mostly because everyone that lives here is afraid of being traded." Ha ha ha! Like there were jokes that were relevant to the state of the NBA right now, but to me, it's like, I, I've to me, and this is my assessment of the whole joke. It's like you wouldn't have like Jerry Seinfeld up there saying some of these jokes. You wouldn't have like I, I feel like they they handpicked Drake because it was a they could write these jokes and put them into the script and it would be okay because it's Drake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I want to say I was offended, but, you know, I know that there's more thought that's given to a lot of these different things than people re even realize. And the fact that they had him hosting it yeah. and the fact it's that some of the jokes that he was it. saying, are, yeah, well, I, I guess so. Well, I mean, what are your it, thoughts it, on it the joke? I mean, the one he was talking about it, about Rihanna, basically, he was like, he's like, I never been in a room with this many, you know, this many people DM my my ex girl, like you know what I'm saying. And he was like, y'all some dogs, like basically talking about like the NBA players trying to get at Rihanna. You know what I'm saying? I, I just if you if you, you, if you uh like if you notice um he he just he did like a lot of this like kind of when he hosted the ESPYS. I think what it is is he has a relationship with a lot of these players, including like, you know, Draymond, for instance, and I know he tight with Steph. I mean, it's a number of them. It's not just them. So I think that's why, you know, he can make kind of joke on them the way, like, like for instance, if Kevin Hart did it, it would be the same way. So I think that, like, I, he, you know, Kevin Hart would be funnier whether he wrote it or somebody else did. But, but I think there was... Yeah, I mean, uh, they 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 figured like they could get Drake right now because you know they all cool with him and, and and you know he would do it and 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 it would go over like still good. I mean, because the thing about it is like he had some he had some jokes that that were funny. He had some that were that were misses. I mean, and so, and, and a lot of the times you know his deliveries was was kind of corny. Like even though the delivery was there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, just overall in terms of the award show, like, I mean, you could tell it was their, like their first inaugural, like it's, it's uh, things yeah. to be worked out. But I mean, it, it, it was good at the end of the day. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it was bad. Like, you know, from my assessment, I don't think it was a bad, like, 
I, I got it. The jo- the jokes were there. The the delivery was there. As far as like you know, knowing Drake, it was an actor. Young Alabama started out in a wheelchair acting. So you know oh he had gosh, that. Man. But to me, it was like like I always envision this Bama like that's like the 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 uh, the producer and he's like, hey, we're gonna get Drake and we're gonna bring him in and we're gonna do this. We're gonna give him these jokes. We're gonna write these jokes for him. He's gonna say it and it's gonna be fine. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be a hit. Like you know, I mean, but I, that, I just but don't. Say, I just don't see him like. I I just think though that like that's always like the easy way out to 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 say that to say to make it seem like entertainers don't got especially certain ones don't wield the power that. Like they're not like nah, I'm not doing that. Or I don't, I don't like this. This is what I'm gonna say, or whatever the case may be. To just think it's like, oh, they come in like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do everything you say. Like Drake's not at that level to where he he has to do what somebody say. He could do whatever he wants to do. And like, let's not not be naive to that. It's the same way how a player can have certain privileges because they're a superstar versus another player doing it and them getting cut from the team. And some Drake is a cornball dude to begin with. Like, because his music is good, people kind of give him a pass. And because he get all the women that people want, but Drake is a cornball for real. So to me, that is not that far of a departure from who he is as a person if he was the right. write all the jokes himself. Uh, yeah, well, what do you think about the uh, the big baller brand shot he took, uh, Jeff? Wh- which, one, which, which one was he that? Said he's, he said rookie, rookie Markel Fultz says he almost signed with big baller brand before he eventually signed with Nike. When asked what changed his mind, Fultz said, I went to college. Uh, I mean... <laughs> <Jump>. <laughs> I mean, it's like funny. one of them like it's, it's like funny it's like a late funny like you wanted to not be funny but you know what I'm saying you gotta you gotta laugh yeah. like I mean it was a good one though he had some good ones like nah he you know, did have some good ones wasn't, yeah, everything, everything wasn't like, it wasn't like a Kenny, gun yeah Kenny Kenny hit him with the funny joke he had a good comeback for that joke when Kenny uh, was just like he was like we just all want to know one thing: Did you write them jumps or whatever? <laughs> and then, you know, and then, and then uh, you know, Drake came back from the uh, break. He was like, oh, "I just got word, you know, I guess the producer or cameraman, I forget who he said. He was like, told me about your joke, and he was like, "Oh, that's funny, coming from the least uh, or the most expendable member of the cast or something like that." So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? They had some little uh-huh. good, you know, good moments in there. A little uh, banter, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, uh, well, on to some some of the Bamas who won the awards on the award show. You had uh, Russell Westbrook got the MVP of the league. Yeah. Uh, so did did they did the league benefit by like being able to wait until this time to, to announce the MVP? Like, is this how it's going to be going forward? Because generally it was announced like the second week of the finals that who who will be the MVP or uh, like yeah definitely was it the second I know it was during the playoffs but um yeah I think that this is gonna be like what they're gonna do moving forward I mean like if you look around the leagues now all of them are putting together like their own award show and really this probably was long overdue for the NBA when you think about how much of a players league it is. Um, that's why the mm-hmm. players uh, put together uh, remember the players awards I, I don't know whether they're doing that again this year I think they are but I don't know when that is so I mean this is just the way and it gives the players like the way that the NBA is uh, you know in the spotlight and likes fashion and all these different type of things like an award show is right up their alley it continues to market the players in the league so I think this is what we'll see going forward yeah, they got the SPs and now they got this. Um, you know, I, I thought it was dope. I thought it was it was cool. Uh, I thought it was nice to have like Kenny Shaq and and, and, and Barkley uh, and Ernie up there, like you know, almost like the TNT crew. You know, kind of in the mix of the, of the whole ordeal. I thought it was, I thought it was good. I, I wasn't particularly, and maybe because I just think he's a cornball. I mean, but. And Drake, I could take a leave, you know what I'm saying? But but you're right. I guess for the culture and for, you know, for what basketball is, and he's cool with a lot of guys, I, I guess it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, and then uh, you figure, obviously, obviously, they're going to have different people, you know, I mean, you would imagine, you know, moving forward, like, it'll be, it might be Kevin Hart next year or something, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just want to say before, we, I don't know whether you were moving the topics, like, did you all see 
the look in James Harden's eyes when Nicki Minaj was performing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Tell sir. Tell me y'all saw that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you, if you, if you yeah. haven't seen it, just go to the BLK Sports 980 uh, IG because the Bama was caught in a thirst trap trance. This Bama <laughs> was locked, locked and loaded. Got like. <laughs> Got <laughs> From afar, dog. I, but the thing is, it's like, Bama James Harden a funny dude, though. He a funny dude. <laughs> he out here trying to get them all. He trying to catch them all, dog, like Pokemon out here. <laughs> um, did, uh, he, uh, he, so Mike D'Antoni got coach of the year. No, what is the league coming to? Is he really the coach of the year? Do you think he the coach of the nah, year? Nah, uh, with the Celtics getting the number one pick, I don't know how that happened. But I mean, not number one pick, but the number one uh, seed in the East. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm like. What? No, first of all, if anybody should have got coach of the year, it should got been James Harden because James Harden did more than Mike D'Antoni did playing on the floor. So I, yeah, I, I don't know, dog. I, I guess, but. To me, it, it would have to go to uh, the Celtics head coach, um, you know, for getting the number one seed. And I know they they lost to the to the Cavs, but you know, and I'm not not taking anything away from the Houston Rockets in a season. But to me, it's just like you know, when you think about coaching, that's putting your your players in a position to win. And I feel like you know, whether 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 uh, the Celtics, even when they they didn't have Isaiah Thomas, they still was able to like you know, have success. I just don't know if that, that would be the same without James Harden on the I, Rockets. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily have an issue with it. I mean, if Stevens would have won it, that would have been cool. But I'm cool with Dan Tony winning it as well. I mean, the Houston Rockets missed the playoffs the year previous. And Harden came back this year. He moved to position. That was because of Dan Tony. The system that he implemented, they made the most threes in NBA history. So, I mean, they and then they played in a tougher conference in the Western Conference. So, I mean, there are arguments to, there to be had to me to um, warrant Dan Tony winning it. Uh, so, so for comeback player of the year or most improved player of the year, Ati Takumpo won that, that category. And then for defensive player of the year, it was Draymond Green, of course. And the other two, I guess... Um, uh, candidates for for the player defensive player of the year was a uh, Kawhi Leonard and what's the Bama name from Utah Jazz the tall Gobert Rudy Gobert. Um, Gobert it was them two, yeah Gobert and uh, so John Wall you know he tweeted out like you know he kind of put like laughing out loud at the at the people who were nominated for defensive player of the year. Does, does he have does he have a case for hell himself no. being in hell no. He tried no. it. <laughs> Move on. Next question. <laughs> I want winners. No. All right. So, so staying with John Wall, it's rumored that he's actively trying to recruit Paul George to the Wizards. One, what do y'all think John Wall is saying to even entice Paul George to even want to come here? And two, <laughs> Does that make a difference it, that that John Wall is actively trying to get Paul George here? Will that like have any influence on whether he's here or not, or is it we just like you know what I'm saying throwing our fishing hook in a, in a uh, pond in the backyard and it really ain't no fish to catch for real? So <laughs> what, do you, what do you thought? Go ahead. Aaron. I think with Paul George on the team, the Wizards. I think we discussed this already. Matter of fact, um, the Wizards instantly become in that conversation for Eastern Conference Finals. And also with him being on the Wizards, I mean, this is all the stuff that he's probably saying to them, saying to Paul George, with him being on the Wizards and not on Cleveland, that's like an extra nudge kind of in that direction because I think he's the number one focus for LeBron James and the Cavaliers right now to get Paul George on Cleveland to kind of help their championship chances. So also, as far as uh, having money and being black, this is like one of the number one cities for a young black people with money to prosper in the country so he might not have the same stage as he would if he was in um la new york or maybe even in cleveland playing alongside lebron james but i think he has just as much um he would have just as much influence on being able to win a championship or at least get to the eastern conference finals playing on the wizards as he would playing in cleveland mm-hmm. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I echo all of that. I mean, that's definitely what he's selling them on. He's selling them on both on the court and off the court opportunities. Um, like, yeah, I mean, if you think about it too, like this is gonna be LeBron's what his uh, 15th season coming up. So mm-hmm. like George and Wall and Bill and all them are still young. So like they're gonna get better. This was a career year for uh, Wall and Bill and Paul George for that matter. So you bring them all together, like opposing LeBron. The only problem is like, to me it's just seeming like from all the reports that I'm hearing that Paul George is just so eager to join up against LeBron or join up and play with LeBron. Like, I mean, I, I don't understand. Like I know, he kind of looked up to him, and that's his idol. But I mean, I would, I would want to beat him. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Man. Yeah, we also yeah. heard that, like, I think it was last summer that he was like up under LeBron, trying to have LeBron kind of basically like tutor him or mentor him on trying yeah. to get to the championship level. So he might be another one of those KD type niggas, where it's like, if you can't beat him, join him, and he knows that yeah. you have to basically be on the super team to be able to uh, win a championship. Uh, Another thing is, I think LeBron is on his way out of Cleveland after this season anyway. So it's Mm going to be a one and done when LeBron leaves. Now, if it ends up being a sign and trade deal, do you want to be stuck in Cleveland, which is a trash season? No. And you do not want to be stuck in Cleveland. And, 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 and LeBron. Well, he would he wouldn't and, do that unless he had assurances from LeBron, which we know LeBron's yeah, not gonna but, do. But 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 LeBron, LeBron but LeBron ain't trust circle. LeBron ain't trustworthy, Two, dog. Not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. Oh. He went down there with Bosch. Bosch. He went, he, I mean, he went, he went down there with Bosch. And and this is and that's my point. If if I'm John Wall. What the conversation sound like is like, look, bro, the LeBron James, that Batman vicious and everything, but dog, we the future. You come with us, we gonna win. And we're gonna go to the Eastern Conference Finals. That's that's at minimum. Yeah. But at the end of your career, like we can get chips, dog, and we can get them for a while if we, if we all stay at this caliber and we keep growing together. And I'm telling them like, look, you can trust LeBron James if you want to, but let's look at his history. Bama went down Miami with Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade. And then when he realized that Bama's knees wasn't the same, that Bama was like, he realized Bama had a heart murmur. And he was like, young, I got to get out of this jump. Bama left him high drive, went back to Cleveland Cavaliers. Cannot win and then him. whole time, they they struggling to get contracts while he he dipped off into the sunset. Then he go back to Cleveland. He get Cleveland. He get there and he revamped the whole roster, get ready to ship everybody off. And now it's just him and Kyrie and Kevin Love for the Batman he cried for. Got him to trade away the top draft. This is ridiculous, kid. man. Ridiculous. Now he he a ghost man on third. He want to get rid of that Batman too. So. What you think gonna happen if you come to the team and for whatever reason, you know, you're not able to mesh well in the system or, you know, you're not getting the looks that you wanted to get or you're not producing to the level he thought you, you know what I'm saying? You, no, he might get the looks, but let's say he not playing to the level that he's expected to play to, you know what I'm saying? And and LeBron get the, the side eye of him. You, you, you don't want to be, if I'm, if I'm John Wall, I'm like, young, you don't want to be in that position. And the thing is too, after a year, who's to say LeBron don't want to just, just dip and just dip off? Like, you know what I'm saying? What if he find out you not the answer to winning a chip? Like, he gets you on the team, he's like, oh, dang, I can't win it with him either. And then the Bama's like, I'm going to go over here. Like, you stuck. I mean, you stuck. I think, and Kyrie going to leave, too. I think I think Paul George's best move, realistically, is, is L.A. or the Wizards. I don't think it's going to Cleveland. Of course, if they trade him there, then there's nothing he can do about oh, it. But then on top like, of that, it, it I, don't even, if I'm the Wizards, though, I don't like, make the trade though. So I, like if I'm the Wizards, I'm not. I don't think I'm trading him just for the one year though. I'm trying to get him as a free agent. I don't want to give up. Not and just have just you probably we probably not gonna sign right. him. So because he's gonna probably want too much money. So sign like you trade. gonna have that. Yeah, I mean you gonna have that that void. But even with that though. Paul George isn't going to uh, ink up uh, a deal with us. Like, you know but what you I don't, mean? He, he is going to go to free agency. You don't think it... See, I agree with that if he was to go to Cleveland, but I would hope that RGM uh, would make sure it would be a sign and trade both ways if they ended up trading for Paul George. 
because that's the way he can get the most money. Like we were saying, it would be like between 40 and 70 million he would miss out on if he, right. um, you know what I mean, didn't have his bird rights when he ended up getting traded. Another thing so, to add to that too is like we mock it and kind of make fun of John Wall a little bit in this city and not necessarily give him his just due, but he's respected around the league by other superstar players. And they know as far as point guards go, there are not a lot of guys at that position who whose first instinct is to get other guys good shots. play like he played, and, yes. Right. right, and he wouldn't have to, Paul George's game would complement what the Wizards have, like Jeff was saying already, so perfectly. I feel like if he was to go to Cleveland, him and LeBron kind of play the same position, it would and it would just basically, to me, they would make it work, because what they do is just basically play one-on-one in a half court anyway. I just mm-hmm. feel like it would make so much more sense and be less stressful on Paul George um, if he ended up in Washington. Yeah, he's a better he's a better mesh here because um like like you said also like Kyrie is also ball dominant with the one on one. So you put mm-hmm. basically three like one on one. Although Paul George he plays the best of the three with them off the ball, but still he still likes to have the ball in his hands. So you uh-huh. put all of them versus with the Wizards, you know he's going to get the ball like cuz Wall is customarily averages double digit assists. Like he's going to uh-huh. get you them looks. And Bill's a good passer, too. So, so, I mean, and with the way that Bill could shoot the ball, like, you know, just the ball movement, like Paul George would get a lot of easy offense. I mean, I also think that the Lakers are the other good move because I think what I think uh, Alonzo Ball is going to be and the way that he create and just be seeing the court, like he would, Paul yeah. George would instantly get looks as well there. So those yeah, are the best I, two I, I owe you an apology. I owe you an apology, Jeff. That bad my real, dog. I try, I, try, I try to tell you, dog. I try to tell you. you. You got too caught up in the Levi hype, you know what I mean? Like, all that. that and not worried about the game. <laughs> no, so, so yeah, if John Wall, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just want to know how much influence, like, you know, I know they. I know John Wall. He know. He know all the new dances, and you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Listen to Migos and all like that. And I, I know that that him being you in cool, that age glizzy, demographic, glizzy, yeah, Glizzy is man. Like you know that little demographic can help in recruitment because you know LeBron James like his hairline gone and he he getting up in age. You know, so he not as in touch with the younger generation as you know maybe a John Wall. I just I just. I think it's a two-part recruitment because not only do you got to recruit Paul George where his interest is here, primarily here, over anywhere else, you got to get management and, and and pipehead kid Ernie Grunfeld to be able to like make make it a priority to get him here. You know what I'm saying? Like to be able to move the pieces necessary in order to make that a reality. And not to be like you, you, you do all this recruiting behind the scenes to get the Bama interested in here. And he say, "Oh yeah, I want to go to Washington," or you know, he makes it evident he wants to be here. And then you fumbling and bumbling, offering Bama's Mahimi and doing this dumb stuff, or just not really, not really like covering your P's and Q's and making it the offer enticing to get him here. And then the Bama just fall through the cracks, and you can't get him because uh, you on the business That's side, you low. I, I it. A lot of things got to go right, and uh, you know what I'm saying all the stars got to align and all like that. But I, I, I hope. I mean, I hope John Wall could 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 fan dangle it, young. I hope he could. It, it, but here's um, here's what has to happen though. Like, say you don't get Paul George this year, like the Wizards have to make the Eastern Conference Finals regardless. That's the stuff that you do too to make yourself attractive to make a right. player like I want to go there. So if the Wizards win a game seven uh, in the semis this year to get to the Eastern Conference Finals, when Paul George is an actual free agent, he might say, you know what? I'm going to sign with Washington. I've seen two years in a row. They were on the cusp uh, two years ago, and then they made it this year and and had a a, a valiant series against the Cavs. That's the type of stuff that makes a player say, you know, I want to sign with that team. And I think yeah, that played a right. huge part in why KD wouldn't even take a meeting here is because they had the opportunity to show that they were on a, on the incline and then they missed the playoffs that year. Right. Yeah, or for that. That's, or for, that's big. Or for as well. Um, Wiz extend qualifying offers to Porter and Bondanovich. So they trying to keep them, but 
we all know how that's going to play out, most likely. Um, on to some football, though. So the Top 100 happened. Tom Brady ends up in the first spot. But uh, before that, though, let's let's talk. Speaking of QBs, Vince Young went in and on the league and the quarterbacks. Is he just bitter, Young, or is he just got a legitimate point calling Ryan Fitzpatrick trash and and basically talking about all these quarterbacks that's in the league that got jobs and and he out here on the street. Yeah, we 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 know he got a legitimate point like yeah I mean, they trash anybody that know the history of our show knows uh <laughs> where we stand in that on this subject <laughs> no so so tom brady got uh-huh. number one rated player by the players in uh 2017 in the top 100 you got von miller julio jones antonio brown khalil mack aaron Rodgers, ezekiel la odell beckham jr Le'Veon bell and matt ryan that, that round out the list uh, is, it, is there anybody on this list that shouldn't be on this nah, top nah. team or is it legit i guess it's legit then because ain't nobody saying that <laughs> i guess there ain't no arguments about this joint at all all right I, i'll play devil's advocate you could uh, argue uh, about the order of the top 10 but i feel like Pretty much everybody in that top 10 should be there. Uh, I'm still on the fence with Ezekiel Elliott because of the offensive line he plays behind. So I think that may be a little high for him. But outside of that, I don't think there's anything super egregious on this list. And it's the players. So uh, with the players voting and not having a lot of that politics with some of the other people, I feel like you're going to get a more accurate list than it would be if, you know what I mean, random Joe Blow steam at some newspaper. So you don't, you don't, so you don't, do you, you don't think that the players get caught up in the hype too? Oh, a little they definitely bit? Do. With, the, with some of the names? No, I do think or they do, you think it's but just, it doesn't I mean, go to... I, I, I'm with you. I think it's, I think Aaron Rodgers should be higher, but then at that point, who do you move down? I mean, the list, there's always arguments you can make, but I don't think there's nothing super crazy that I would be like, how the hell did this person end up, you know what I mean, in the top 10? It, it, it seems right. fair. So that- so 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 you all think uh I'm just curious, uh that Matt Ryan's the third best quarterback in the league now? No. But that's another episode <laughs> for me. Okay. You said Matt yeah. Ryan's the third rated quarterback? The yeah, rat, that Matt that? Ryan's the third rated quarterbacks in the league? But the list is from the year I, that I they think <sighs> So that's why I'm not that bent out of shape about Matt Ryan. And no, I mean and it's yeah, I, I, to me, I, I can't really fight against it because the Bama made it to the Super Bowl. He had a, uh, an amazing season. MVP. And, you know, even though, yeah, MVP. And even though, you know, Aaron slandered this man for eons and for him to resurrect out of that slander, you know, just says what kind of season this Bama had. And so I'm not mad at him at 10. You know what I'm saying? I, who who would you put over him? To me, nah, Ben I mean, Roethlisberger didn't stay healthy all year. Um, like who who else is on there? What 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 what? what remind, remind if somebody can real quick remind me of what uh, I know what their record is and that goes a long way. But we know it's two sides of the ball. Um, Drew, Drew Brees remind me of what his his, his uh season looked like. You talking about his uh the record of the team? Nah nah the the team record. I know they the probably stats. were what like yeah the stats. What was the stats? How many touchdowns he had? Uh, 37. He threw 37 against how many interceptions? Uh, 15, which would have put him at uh, third in the league in touchdowns. Uh, first in the, the league in yards. Good. Completion percentage, 70%. He had a really good season. And what, yeah, and what, was, and what was his QBR? His QB, his Q, I don't see the QBR, but the quarterback rating was 101.1. I mean, 101.7. Okay. Yeah, nah, I mean, the, the only only reason I'm asking is because I mean we know how like anytime I mean he look he's done the same things when they had a defense except they actually won more games as a team so like it's just now they haven't been able to fix that defense but he do the same thing every year so like I but I feel you in in terms of the reason they did I mean because they're going off of last season. But for me, if somebody's doing the same thing and they've done it at a longer uh, uh, sustained career, then it's just always hard for me to bump up the new guy because he had a one flashy season. I'm but like, it's, Yo, Matt, it's Matt Ryan, a new. Is he? 
was really tra- a new I mean, guy. I mean, he's been he, 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 he okay. Was, but what the, okay. the thing that give it, that allows me to give that a pass is because they specifically say if you watch the show, who had the best year this year? It's not about who's the best, or they say okay. about the particular performance that year. That's why yeah. I'm okay with Matt Ryan being there. That's why I'm okay with Ezekiel Elliott. Where I would have argued it if it was like the best 100 players in the league. To me, that's a completely different list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh man, how, how long we got until football start back up again? We got training camp in July, and I think are we like less than a hundred days out from yeah, the uh, season? Start? Yeah. And when when that yeah. um, hard knock start? Like, what's the date on that? I know. Uh, who, who's the team for the hard knocks this year? Tampa Bay Bucks, Bucks yeah. Nation. The- my mom, yeah, dog, man. my squad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my, squad. Yeah. my squad. My yeah, squad. I'm, I'm gonna be the long. Oh. I'm gonna be the uh, long bama jai, rubbing for the skins, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, this is gonna be gone, crazy. You gone too, hey, too hell, hell, young. Hell. You gone too So so look, so look, so look, 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 look. So this is the thing. <laughs> These bamas do not. If they don't, they not. They don't sign Kirk Cousins, young. This year is gonna be a roller coaster ride. Hold on to your helmets, dog. Because you, I wouldn't be surprised if that Bama called McCoy be out that jump starting a game or two, dog. If it just to get bad or if things just do not go with the, all this this optimism that the front office at the Washington Redskins had, they just don't go the way that they think it's gonna go. Then you could see a lot of things taking place, dog. The one thing you, I you will see. Oh. Go ahead. I was just going to say the one thing I do have to give him credit for um, and apparently the draft board was already I guess 90% decided before Scott McGloin left the team added a lot of depth at a lot of positions I think they got better all the way I mean at receiver you can make the argument but other than that I feel like they added a lot of depth and got better overall on the roster so Mm -hmm. um, all the other teams in the division I felt like got way better so it might be a wash in the long run. I just do feel like I I don't root for the team, but they got better. Like that's not something I can even pretend to deny mm-hmm. um, with the offseason. season. Yeah, what you just gonna say, Jeff? Nah, I mean I, you know I, I was gonna say the thing about football, man, is and why they have such a. It's not the hardest job in the world, particularly at this point, to market the game because the season is short like that 16 weeks is like here and then it's gone and anytime you make moves and they seem exciting it always has you excited about the next season now how long that excitement lasts you know, <laughs> certain franchises get you know what I mean their fans Four get weeks. the benefit of it last Four to six year, weeks last max. <laughs> right so you know what I mean? So that that's the thing. So, I mean, I'm excited about the season coming up because it's another chance for us to see what, what the Skins are going to do, uh, you know, about, first of all, about con- uh, Kurt's contract. The joint's like a soap opera. And secondly, <laughs> to see what Kurt is going to do not having the receiving weapons that he's uh, been accustomed to having. I mean, other than, you know, Crowder and Reed. He, like, he don't have the, you know, Jackson speed and obviously uh, – the security blanket that he had with Garcon. So, I mean, I'm interested to see the season, like what it's going to look like. Yeah. It will be interesting. By July, whatever that date is, this Batman don't have a long-term deal. Um, it's going to be July interesting. 17th. And like rumor, though, and there's rumors that, that a part of him signing or being with the franchise is that some of these contingencies could be removed, like Cole McCoy not being on the roster, anybody to really like challenge or threaten his ability to like be in position. I mean, I'm sure him being on the roster with Robert and how that whole shenanigans went down probably prompted him for the, the funny business. And so I wouldn't be surprised if he if he's putting contingencies in place like, look, if y'all want to sign me to a long-term deal, this is what I'm going to need, this, this, and this, and this. And that might be outside of the contract just to ensure that they can't pull the rug on him. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you so, can't even knock him for that after what they did to the golden child. He probably like, damn, they, they don't care. Like, if I'm not, you know what I mean, kind of in position to make everybody look great, they going to point the finger at somebody else. So, mm. 
can you be mad at him saying he don't want you know what I mean anybody else on the roster for them to pull the same shenanigans again yeah, you know, I, I, and I mean it makes sense and people you know it hasn't been officially reported but to me that's that makes sense you know what I'm saying that makes that makes perfect sense and I and there's no like it's not a like a uh, to me like a crazy conclusion or crazy idea that you know that would be something that he would say look you know you know if y'all want me to sign this is what I'm gonna need you know along with this bread the bread sticks the uh, little Caesar kind with the with the butter and garlic on them because Bama don't want that bread he ain't gonna settle for no little cheesy contract we saw Derek Carr get the 125 70 mil uh, 40 guarantee so you know, it's going to be around that range. The next person on tap, Matthew Stafford, going to get a deal. His junk going to be through the roof. You know, so... <laughs> again. Again, so I, I, it ain't going to get no easier for the Redskins in their negotiations um, as, the, as they continue to wait. And... They royally you screwed know, this up. Yeah, and, they, and, and to me, they continue to do it. Like I said before, in the draft, they should have made it. I know they were trying to say that they, you know, basically show good faith to Kurt by like saying, we, you know, we got your bag and we going, we want you and blah, blah, blah. But you, you basically put yourself in an even deeper hole by not even looking at uh, another option at the quarterback position yeah. in case that you don't have Kurt. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think Nate Sudfeld is ready. And I, I mean, we just yet to see his development yet and what that looked like. But I, I mean, from last year, he ain't showing me nothing. And I'm like, yeah, this Batman can do it. Cole McCoy is Cole McCoy. He's a good backup. So I'm not even confident he can come in and, and be the guy either. But can he win eight games? Can he win eight games? And this new revamped division, depending on how defense looks, I mean, that's a possibility, but I just can't. Right now, it's a lot of unknowns that I can't really stamp and say yes or no. Um, and I don't think the skins can either. And so that's what makes this whole ordeal just so interesting because they don't really know where they want to be at right now with the whole situation. Um, last question. So are you willing to pay yes. three? Are you willing to pay three million dollars per win for your quarterback? Nah, Bob. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, lastly, before we get out of here, Serena Williams back in the news, young. This time it's somebody else uh, who's who's making a point to bring Serena, my girl Serena, into the mix. John Bubblehead McEnroe, though, <laughs> made the statement said that you know she's good and everything, but if she played with the men, she would be ranked seven hundred. Is, is he just is he just trolling? Or is it 700 easy. niggas that play tennis? I ain't know it was that many. <laughs> no, I'm being dead serious. I'm. Yeah, because the 701 uh, ranked person like has some common. I can't remember what they said, oh. but yeah. But so to answer your question, though, there is. Oh, okay. I, I mean, well, it, real talk. Okay, realistically, there we go. If Serena <laughs> played against, the, yeah, if Serena you, played you with the. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Nah, seriously. If Serena played with the dudes, right, where would she be ranked? I'm, I, I think that's a fair a fair question. In my opinion, she'd be <laughs> in the top 100. She'd be you in the think, top 100. So, uh, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> nah, I nah, you got it, dog. You got it. It's all you. Dog, so I, you I know, think, I'm, I I'm think, sensitive I think, to this. So, I'm going I'm to give a two-part answer. The first part is it was tacky for him to come out and say that, especially somebody who was a professional themselves. It was tacky as hell mm-hmm. to come out and say that publicly. Now let's get to the science of it. And I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but there's certain people that I've had conversations with about basketball and the WNBA. We're not even professionals, but we feel like it's, come on, Harold. Like, they going under, hold men on, are men going and women are women. WNBA going underwater though. I'm just trying to tell you. The new little three on three basketball jump by the by the put an end to him because I seen the the little game. This is a short little quick part, but they I seen the three on three like the recap jump. The stadium was packed way more than a WNBA basketball game for a three on three for some old Bamas who can't even like play no more. So that's that. Now I get the science part of it, and I know that you know 
But tennis is a little different though. Tennis is not where your athleticism, it like, I feel like this, it's different sports. I tell people like this, this is how I feel about sports all across the board. So like tennis, well, I start with golf. Golf, I feel like you're in a golf, you need other things outside of your athleticism more than you need athleticism. Now athleticism helps it, be, help you be better at it if you know if you have like the technique and the patience and all the other things that golf requires but athleticism is if you had to put like a percentage of how how it does it make you great or does it make you good it's a lower number on athleticism it can enhance your game but it's not the most prominent thing so let me ask basketball you. athleticism hey, is higher hold on hold on hold on hold on hold why on. don't they just all play together then in golf and tennis Harold if it's not as yeah. I don't and, think it's and, as big a factor as football no, and basketball. I, I agree. I, with I, that. I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, re- like, it's a reason. It's a reason in general that sports are separate. Do you know? No, I the, get uh, no. I, fastest, I, I'm not. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you know that the, the that the fastest like uh, serve tennis is 30 miles per hour faster than the women's, and that's Serena included. Like just, just, in, just in, as a general, you know, rule of thumb. The serve yeah. at top speed is thirty miles per hour faster. No, so, no, no, I'm not. I'm not denying. Listen, I, when I say that she would be able to compete and compete at a high level, and she would at least crack the top one hundred. To me, to me, like after like, about fifty, when you get to fifty, it starts to it starts to level out. Like the Bamas who are hitting. You talking about the top Bamas who who hitting like. The ball, like, crushing. Serena is, like, crushing. What about the dude that plays quarterback that can throw the ball 100 miles an hour but can't hit the broad side of a barn? Like, I feel like athleticism is different in that way where, like you said, there are other intricacies that make you go from good or very good to great and elite. But the athleticism part of it... Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, and to add on to that kind of what you're saying, like, just because, like... Uh, she may be able to, uh, you know what I mean, like win, uh, win a game or a set here and there. Like to think, like that uh, tournament in, tournament out, game after game, set after set, like against a male, like over the course of a season. Like I mean, like that's just like, like I said, it's a reason that there are men's sports and women's sports. And even saying like, she would be in the top 100 is kind of reiterating his point. Maybe there was some hyperbole in that, but she's the uncontested number one woman probably in the history of tennis versus just falling into the, you know what I mean? So maybe there was some hyperbole in that and he exaggerated by saying 700. But mm. at the same time, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of true. Mm. Yeah, I think he should have got her to be like clear with the question so he could then have to go down that route like you said well, from the standpoint well, of, I don't necessarily I'm not tripping I'm not up in arms about it but like for the outcry or whatever and I'm sure you know he's not really sleep over it but well well word on the street is he got a book book that he's uh, trying to sell and this is nice little you know got it way that he get you know you know how I go man we live in in a world where it's all about how, how you get people talking about you you know what I'm saying if, um, so uh, that that is that. Uh, shout out to my my, my boys who won a soccer tournament, MD Milan, out here Gaithersburg, little little That's soccer right, uh, soccer league, Joe. Um, shout out to Wiz Buffy podcast. Uh, you gotta check them out, especially this week in battle rap. A whole lot of stuff went down for my battle rap fans out there. Uh, shout out uh, Hip Hop Now with Vegas. Shout out. Uh, his and her podcast, and I, I just want to say, I just want to say, you know, real quick, y'all thoughts on the big three because we didn't really, you know, we didn't. Oh, the jump. No, oh, well, Jason Williams, his knee gone. That Bama towards ACL, and you gonna see ACLs. Oh, that's what. That's what they, uh, That was the confirmed uh, report. Nah, it wasn't confirmed, though. I'm going go. by my basketball. <laughs> I'm going by my real basketball experience, dog. No, did you see how the Bama get carried off and how the Bama's I, had the whole? I, I, they they I, had I missed it. that game. I saw the end of it. I saw Lewis hit the bucket and then hit the free throw to end the game. Oh, yeah. But I didn't see when he got hurt. I heard about it though. Yeah, yeah, dog. It's ACL, dog. It's gone, dog. 
The Bama didn't even get touched. He just did a hop step, try to jump back. The Bama <laughs> fell on the ground, and then he had to get an escort off the floor. And he couldn't walk on his own volition. So you already know what that is. Wasn't no angle. Behind the back, skip that lane, spin move, bring it back. Curl cross, snatch. Behind the back, spin move, filet, yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> the Jonas are all right though. Ice Cube got 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 something here. He might have I think something on his hands. He, he might he room. might have something here. It, it, it yeah, gotta be a little a little bit of tweaks that I, I feel like need to happen. Like I don't think they should have like a set score. Like they should just have a time limit, and then you know, and then whoever's winning at the end, almost like a regular basketball game kind of. Because I think that that element would 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 would, would spice it up a little bit. Um, and, but I think everything is good about it, dog. I, I think it's good. It's going to do. It's going to do more numbers than the WNBA. Stop! 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 We already it's stopped facts, doing it in one segment. We we can't put all that pressure on them. You're right. You're right. One show. You're right. You're right. I mean, you're right, definitely. Dog, you're right. He definitely has something on his hands because the guys can still hoop, and everybody's gonna be intrigued because you know the players. And like, yeah, it's it's Bama's out there that's still really nice. And so yeah. when you when you factor that into you know, and in the elements, the differences of it with the three on three, like like you like y'all said, I mean, he, he might have something on his hands. But no, overall, I'm gonna say like what he, I'm, said, it was good. I'm gonna say what he should do to size this jump. This was this would take it up a notch. If the Bama had like, if he told like the league and was like, look, we're gonna do it, kind of like take a page out of wrestling's book, and and, and had a Bama's trash talking like the different teams, like after the games you do it, like an after game interview, like oh yeah, we play them Bama's, they sorry, like and just kind of spicy, so then the games be a little more chippy, like it be, you know what I'm saying? Like nah, Martin already think, been doing it. Yeah, oh, Key Martin already been going. Like, yeah, <laughs> so, and, and I and I think you know when you factor in obviously Q creatively, I think like him himself, and he gonna probably have like a little. Uh, a team or whatever of writers that try to come up with some narratives to push when they be like marketing this joint as it go along like little storylines and stuff like that but they just gonna have to see kind of how the joint play out but yeah I definitely envision that type of stuff in the future for the joint yeah, it's, it's alright though it's, it's, it's a work in progress but I, I like the vision on the joint uh, uh, that is all we got today alright you getting shots up yeah about to get out of here now I'm about to see where my ankle brace is at. Find my knee brace to see if I can walk so that you down shit around. Nah, don't, don't put me on this. Hold on, listen. Hold on, soon. DuPont going to be back open on Sundays, young. Know, back in that joint and hooping. I know when you come down. I think we don't. What's up, I think? Yeah, no. Yeah, so that is our show. Next week, we get D back. Um... Follow us at BOK Sports 980 at, on IG, Instagram. Or well, IG and Instagram is the same thing. I'm lunching. But send us emails and stuff. You want your questions answered. Uh, we out. Shut up. Give me a turn to speak. Fine, see? You do that to me. How does it feel? How does it feel to be told to shut up? We've talked about it. Let me speak. How does that do feel? Not. How does that do feel? Do